Well, good morning. Good morning. Ha, there I go. <laughs> good to see you this morning. Glad to have you here on this Labor Day weekend. We know that uh, lots of folks are traveling today. We have our, our youth retreat this weekend. And uh, uh, so uh, we're, uh, we're lots of things going on. Lots of things to talk about, apparently. So, <laughs> so <laughs> we don't have a church dinner today, so we've got to talk now, right? So, great to see you. We do have a few announcements, and uh, you, most of them are familiar to you, I think, but uh, we're going to go ahead and announce them anyway, or we continue to have our, our, uh, uh, our basket at the back there with uh, the, uh, where we're collecting our offering, and uh, we appreciate again and again and again, we appreciate uh, all of your, all of your uh, support of the church as we uh, have uh, uh, made some changes over the last couple of years. But uh, thank you for uh, keeping that in mind. Uh, just to be sure that we're still aware, the uh, uh, Trail Life and American Heritage Girls are now, m again, meeting in the church. And so they're here on Sunday afternoons. And we appreciate this ministry. And we want to do all we can to support the ministry. If you find ways that you can support them individually, that's great, too, uh, to just be uh, present, to be a part of uh, what they do, and to give them uh, the support that they, moral support that they need as they uh, keep uh, uh, working with these children here at the church. Our youth retreat is happening right now, and uh, they're going to be returning home tomorrow, so uh, we're going we're to pray today for a good retreat and also for safe travel for them as they come back uh, uh, tomorrow. Uh, Wednesday night, I'm pretty sure we're going to have a discipleship, discipleship study this week. Uh, there's, uh, uh, we've been uh, very busy the last couple of weeks with, uh, with doing some ministry work here at the church and uh, uh, serving families uh, experiencing loss, and so we appreciate all of your work in that. That's good discipleship right there, so a good discipleship lesson for us. But uh, we'll be meeting here Wednesday night, 7 o'clock in the fellowship hall. There's a Zoom meeting available, and we'll send out a link again this week. I promise we'll sing it out a link again this week to uh, make sure that everybody has that. If you'd like to zoom in uh, as, we, as we meet together. This coming Saturday is the second Saturday of the month. It's already here. It's men's prayer breakfast time. So we'll meet at uh, Los Tapatias at uh, 7.30 a.m. And uh, our men's fellowship uh, will have a good time there. And uh, look forward to seeing you all uh, come to be a part of that. Just to get ahead of things a little bit, uh, uh, not this Tuesday, but the next Tuesday, the Board of Stewards is meeting here at the church. We always like to have a couple of announcements in service before that meeting uh, arrives, but uh, that's Tuesday, September 13th, and it'll be at 7 o'clock. And our women's group is uh, back on the schedule now. We're uh, uh, back on uh, September 24th. Uh, they'll, meeting, they'll be meeting again here at the church. That's a Saturday, and uh, it's at 9.30 a.m., I understand. So uh, if you'd like to check with Pam about details on that, uh, you can do that. Uh, so this gets us pretty much ahead. But if you'd like to check the uh, website anytime, you can do that. BethelMethodist.com slash Robinson. So uh, uh, be, uh, check in there uh, if you'd like to uh, see if uh, what else we've got going uh, in these coming days. These are our announcements today. And so uh, we look forward to what God has for us in this service uh, as, we, as we meet together uh, today. The uh, uh, scripture reading from the Old Testament today, um, Old Testament uh, this morning, comes from uh, Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 15 through 20. And these are the words of uh, Moses that uh, God speaks through Moses to the people as they're getting ready to enter into the promised land. See, I have set before you today life and good death and evil in that i command you always to love the lord your god to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments his statutes and his judgments that you may live and multiply and the lord your god will bless you in the land which you go to possess but if your heart turns away so that you do not hear and are drawn away and worship other gods and serve them i announce to you today that you shall surely perish you shall not prolong your days in the land which you cross over the Jordan to go in and possess. I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life 
that both you and your descendants may live, so that you may love the Lord your God, that you may obey his voice, and that you may cling to him, for he is your life and the length of your days, and that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give them. Let's bow our heads as we begin our service in, with prayer this morning. This morning, Lord, we are grateful to be in your house. We're grateful to be in a place where we can hear your voice together and speak, uh, hear the words spoken to us that you have for us today. You have poured out blessings on your people for all time. You have led them on the path of the true and the real life that you are establishing here on earth. We pray this morning that you would enable and empower each of us to keep responding and choosing to walk with you in your way again and again, each and every day of our lives, that we might revel in your love and love all that we meet in the same way as we are being loved by you. Our prayer is always in your blessed name. Amen. Let's sing together this morning. Ken, come and lead us. Let's stand together. We'll sing hymn number 539 and 540 this morning to begin with. My faith looks up to thee. My faith looks up to thee, thou Lamb of Calvary, Savior divine. Now hear me while I pray, take all my guilt away. Oh, let me from this day be holy thine. May thy rich grace impart strength to my fainting heart, my zeal inspire. As thou hast died for me, oh, may my love to thee pure, warm, and changeless be a living fire. Hope is in the Lord who gave himself for me and paid the price of all my sin at Calvary. For me he died, for me he lives, an everlasting life and light he freely gives. And now for me he stands, before the Father's throne, he shows his wounded hands and names me as his own. For me, he died. For me, he lives. An everlasting life and light he freely gives. He has and to all his mind to be believe and recognize his work of love and Christ receive. For me he died, for me he lives, an everlasting life and light he free. Is. Psalm 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth fruit in its season whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does 
shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are the chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Let's sing, Be Still and Know, hymn number 585. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. I am the Lord that He loved thee. I am the Lord that He loved thee. I am the Lord that He loved thee. Love you with a steadfast love. I 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 love you with a steadfast love. In thee, O Lord, I put my trust. In thee, O Lord, I put my trust in Thee, O Lord, I put my trust. Let's remain standing for the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and is sitting at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. And from there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the one universal church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. In this part of the service, we turn our attention to the prayers. And it is the prayers of the people. It's not just the pastor's prayer. It's the prayers of the people. And I know you have prayers that you want to offer to God this morning. I know that you have needs that are, are you're aware of, uh, needs that uh, we need to intercede with for those that, that are going through these times of trouble. And so we do that. This morning, we continue to remember our friend, Bede. Northcutt and the Northcutt family as they continue to mourn their loss as as they were so uh, kind uh, this past Wednesday they they told us that we are part of that extended family we are the church family and it meant so much to be to be a part of this family and God bless you for your service to them as uh, as you as you continue to mourn this loss to our family and uh, who we are in this church and I'm sure there, there are other needs as well that we need to remember this morning. We've, we uh, send that prayer list out every week, and we look through that, and we say, Lord, there are so many that we need to remember today. And you may be going through something right now that we're not aware of, something very private to you, and we want to pray with you in this time as, uh, as you go through uh, whatever that is right now. So let's, let's bow our heads together, and let's all pray as we... 
as we're directed by God, as we listen to what God has to say to lead us from this place to the places where we're appointed to be disciples of Christ. Let's bow our heads together. This morning, Lord, we look forward to what you have to say to us today. It's an awesome thing for us to think about that you do want to communicate with us. You have things that we need to know. You have places that we need to go. You have direction and empowerment and enablement that will support us in all of those places that we're directed by your grace and by your spirit to go to this week. So we look forward to what you have to say to us today. You know the needs of our hearts. You know all about us. Sometimes, Lord, we feel like that we're, we're just uh, being repetitive in our prayers as we continue to offer them to you. But you know these things, and you care about all of these things that are in our life, the, the needs of ourselves, the needs of, of our family, the needs of our friends, the needs of the people that we as a church are ministering to today. And so, Lord, we, we're humbled to regard this time of praying as as much listening to your direction as it is to offering these things that are desires of our hearts, things that we want to see happen in our lives. In your word, we are reminded today. We're reminded that we must respond to your love by loving you above everything else and loving others as we have been loved by you. Our intercession for others is a response in that direction today. May our intercessions be guided by your spirit to the people in, the, in other places that God wants us to be an intercessor. Lord, this morning we pray as we are continuing to discern what you have in store for the mission of this church. We know the mission of the church worldwide, Lord, is to be the example of the kingdom, to, be, to bring the kingdom to pass in all places, to all people. And Lord, we're a part of that. And so we pray that you would direct us in our part of bringing that kingdom to pass in this world at this time. We pray, Lord, for that you would, would touch all of those that are in so-called positions of leadership, whether it be in the church or in government or in schools or wherever it might be. This morning we're praying for, for wisdom and discernment on the part of these, that they may listen to you and be guided by you to do the things that must be done in these places where they are appointed. We pray this morning for those that are suffering in, in body, mind, or spirit, however that might be today. We pray, Lord, for your healing peace, for your presence with them. Lord, you know the needs that are represented here in this congregation today. And as we take a moment hear these names that we silently utter to you of those that you put on our hearts right now. Take a moment to offer these to God. Again, Lord, we pray for peace and presence. Your peace, the only true peace. Your presence, the greatest presence in our lives, in the lives of these for whom we pray. We're thankful this morning for the blessing of creation, for all that you have given us to be a part. We pray, Lord, that you would help us to be the kind of, of caretakers that, that you envisioned as you created this race of people in this world today. 
we're especially reminded today to pray for those experiencing loss. We lift up again Bede's family to you. You know the that place that's empty right now. The physical presence is empty, but the memories are still there. The blessing of the example that was set in this life is still there. Not just for the family, but for us as well. As a church family, we're grateful for that. And we lift each other up as we seek ways to mourn that loss that we feel right now. Guide us to be better disciples because we've known a great disciple in our lives. We pray this morning that you would direct these words that we prayed, every prayer that's been offered this morning. May it be totally for your honor and glory, putting aside all other wants and desires that we have, desiring only your will to be done from this time forward. And we pray that prayer that our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. This morning our New Testament reading comes from a passage in Philemon's letter, or the letter to Philemon from Paul. Philemon, we read the first 21 verses of that short letter. Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our beloved friend and fellow laborer, to the beloved Aphia, Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in your house, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God, making mention of you always in my prayers, hearing of your love and faith which you have toward the Lord Jesus and toward all the saints, that the sharing of your faith may become effective by the acknowledgement of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. For we have a great joy and consolation in your love because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed by you, brother. Therefore, Though I might be very bold in Christ to command you what is fitting, yet for love's sake, I rather appeal to you. Being such a one as Paul the aged, and now also a prisoner of Jesus Christ, I appeal to you for my son Onesimus, whom I have begotten while in my chains, who once was unprofitable to you, but now is profitable to you and to me. I'm sending him back. You therefore receive him, that is, that is, my own heart, whom I wish to keep with me, that on your behalf he might minister to me in my chains for the gospel. But without your consent, I wanted to do nothing, that your good deed might not be my, by compulsion, as it were, but voluntary. For perhaps he departed for a while for this purpose, that you might receive him forever, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a beloved brother, especially to me, but how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord. If then you count me as a partner, receive him as you would me. But if he has wronged you or owes anything, put that on my account. I, Paul, am writing with my own hand. I will repay, not to mention to you that you owe me even your own self besides. Yes, brother, let me have the joy from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in the Lord having confidence in your obedience, I write to you, knowing that you will do even more than I say. Let's stand again as we sing together. Let's stand and sing hymn number 424, the servant song.
Brother, sister, let me serve you. Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. We are pilgrims in your journey. We're together on the road. We are here to help each other walk the mile and bear the load. I will hold the Christ light for you in the night time of your fear. I will hold my hand out to you, speak the peace you long to hear. I will weep while you are weeping. When you laugh, I'll laugh with you. I will share your joy and sorrow till we've seen this journey through. When we sing in God in heaven, we shall find each harmony. I am on the hill together of Christ's love and agony. Brother, sister, let me serve you. Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. Amen. You can be seated. Let me be as Christ to let me be as Christ to be Thank you. We love singing these songs together. I hope you love singing these songs together. Hearing God's word is the subject of sermon today. And we hear these God's word in these songs. We hear these in, these in the prayers that we pray. We hear them in the lives that we each live and the testimony that we each give. And so we need to hear today. We need to listen today as God speaks to us uh, in all these different ways. I, in considering the passage from Luke, it, it seemed that, that uh, I was reminded about the kinds of people that I, I hear a lot, the, the kinds of people, and you probably know some of them, uh, I'm almost assured that you know some of them, when you talk to them, all they can talk about is themselves. Do you know anybody like that? Yeah, I, I know a few of them like that. And they, they, it, their conversation is, uh, it's almost a trial sometimes, and <laughs> we have to admit it, it's almost a trial sometimes to hear the, them talk about all of the crisis in their lives, all of the, the needs that they have, all of the, the, the personal opinions that are valuable to them. And so we, 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 we bear with that because those can be pretty long conversations sometimes. And, and so it, it's a, it's a, uh, that kind of came to mind as, as this, this subject was, was considered uh, today. Uh, once upon a time, way back in the past, I, I mentioned this one night at discipleship study. Uh, uh, I was young and stupid. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, still kind of stupid but now I'm old and stupid I suppose but the uh, uh, my boss at the time decided this guy needs some help I'm gonna send him to the Dale Carnegie course and uh, and so he spent a lot of money and sent me to uh, to, un to Dale Carnegie to learn to win friends and influence people don't know if that's ever been been uh, borne out uh, in in my life. I, I, I do want to point out this was before I met Susan, and so I owe Dale Carnegie my the fact that I listened to Susan and 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 learned a little bit about life and 
And so uh, I was actually brave enough to ask her for a date. That's pretty good right there. But, but learning to listen is one of the primary things I got out of that course. Learning to really listen what's on the, the minds of other people. Now, it was, it was for a totally other purpose. It was totally so that, that uh, I could figure out well, what, what their needs were, and then I could sell them something. That was what it was for. That was what it was about. But winning friends and influencing people was the first thing you had to do before you could sell them anything. Dale Carney was, Garn Carnegie was pretty good at that. And, uh, and so uh, I, I learned something from that. Always listen to what people have to say. That's a, that's a good thing for us to, to think. But Christian discipleship is not about winning friends and influencing people. That is not what we are about. We are not about business principle, putting business principles uh, at, to practice to sell Jesus to somebody else out there. That's not what the church is for. Jesus would, would be appalled if we ever, if we ever became that kind of business in this world. We're, we are followers of Christ. We think about that maybe in the way that we pray. We kind of uh, referred to that a little bit today. The way that we pray. How do we pray to God? Do we talk to God? Do we think of prayer as talking to God to let him know all of the stuff that's going on in our lives, all of the crisis that's there, all of the health issues that are there, all of the things that we need, all of the things that we want, all of the, just putting them before God. That's, that's sometimes how we think about prayer. That's a kind of a childish way to think about prayer, making sure that God knows what I want. That's not, that's not what prayer is. Prayer is communication with God. Think about the most beautiful picture in all of the Bible that you can think about. The one that comes to mind, I'm almost certain, is Adam and Eve in the garden. Walking and talking with God. It is the ideal. It was what we were created for. It's what God desired for us, to walk and talk with God. Not to just tell him, you know, all of the stuff that we lack, but just to, to be in God's presence, to, to listen to what God had to say, to go with God, to walk with God, to be guided through this beautiful place, this garden that had everything that could be possibly imagined with only a little bitty boundary in the middle so that God said, don't go there. Don't get involved in that. Everything else is yours. That's a beautiful picture. Thinking about being always in the presence of God, the best picture that I can think of in the Bible is that, is that being in, in God's presence all the time. And that's what conversation with God is about listening to God, being guided by God. We confess that God is God Almighty, all-wise, infinite, all-seeing, all-knowing. And then we think that we have to remind God about all of the stuff that we need in this world. When God's got all of this this amazing bounty to offer to us guidance wisdom uh, empowerment to do what God wills to be done in this world it might be a good idea for us to begin to think about listening to God putting God ahead of all of this other noise that's in this world right now and you know very well the culture we live in is just full of that kind of, of that kind of conversation. We've read some scriptures today from Deuteronomy. We we read about uh, that that day that as Moses is preparing the people to be to walk over that river to enter into the promised land, and this these words from God and through Moses, good. Death and evil have all been set before these people. They've been out there in the wilderness for 40 years. 
They know what, what he's talking about when he talks about that. He talks about listening to God and following direction, and that will result in God's provision for them as they enter into this land that's been promised to them. He talks to them about not listening, what that involves. It has consequences. The response of choice is up to the people as they stand there ready to enter into the place that God has promised them. God begs them. God speaks to them through Moses, begs them to choose life. Don't choose that little bitty place in the middle of the garden. Just don't go there. Choose life. Choose all this other stuff that's out there. It's amazing. We heard the psalm this morning, Psalm 1. That used to be the prayer that we prayed in our family every night before we went to bed. We said, we, we recited the Psalm 1. I remember it in the King James Version, so I kind of get lost in some of our, these other modern versions. But all of the concepts are still there. The pictures are still there. We don't listen to others. We put, we put listening to God ahead of all of these other things. What We don't walk in the way that others walk. We walk in God's way. We don't sit in the places with the scoffers. We sit with God. We're in God's presence. It's not the way to blessing, to do all of these other things. But delighting in God, meditating on God's words, having a rooted life, a place where we can stand, bearing fruit, really, truly prospering in life what God has to offer. And those that, that don't respond are like the chaff in the wind, blown around wherever their attention takes them, whatever the latest thing is. We read in Philemon today, Paul writing to a friend, confident that this friend will hear with a responsive heart to what God says through Paul's request. This friend had done that before. This friend had proven true. This friend knew what Paul was talking about, and Paul is confident about what he has to say. Everything, Paul is giving up something here. A friend is being sent back to, to this, this man, Philemon. Paul is not putting his preference ahead of what God desires for this friend. And then today our gospel reading uh, comes from Luke. It talks about some, some hard things. It, it, Jesus says some very difficult things to these people as they're following him. It talks about the huge crowds that are out, on, out there on the road in Palestine, following, following Jesus around in, in Galilee is where he's at. He's, they're following Jesus around to where, wherever he goes, and they grow, and they grow, and they grow, and Jesus speaks some very hard words to him, and these hard words are not meant to thin out the herd, not meant to thin out the crowd, but Jesus wants every single one of them to understand what it, it, what it means to actually follow Jesus, what it actually means to be in the presence of God all the time, how that comes about, and so he says some very very difficult things as we read it. Let me read the gospel passage to us this morning. Luke chapter 14, verses 25, 25 through 35. Now great multitudes went with him, and he turned and he said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. That's a hard word. And whoever does not bear his cross and comes after me cannot be my disciple. A cross. You people have to go get a cross. You have to, to carry this cross with you. If you don't do that, you cannot be my disciple. For which of you intending to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it, lest after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king, 
going to make war against another king does not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000. Or else, while the other is still a great way off, he sends a delegation and asks conditions of peace. So likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all that he has not has cannot be my disciple. Salt is good. But if the salt has lost its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It's neither fit for the land nor for the dunghill. But men throw it out. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Those are hard words that Jesus speaks there. Those people in first century Galilee hear these words and they, they have to start asking questions. I guess I can't follow this guy anymore. because I can't do that. I can't hate my mom and dad. I can't do that. I can't give up everything. How am I going to do that? I'm not carrying the cross. No, uh-uh. Cross is obscenity. That's a bad word. It's a five-letter word tough the words that jesus speaks are hard words to hear hate and cross jesus talked about hate in the sermon on the mountain we remember those words where jesus said you know, you have heard it said that you shouldn't kill your brother i tell you if you even if you say i hate my brother you've killed him those are words that jesus jesus spoke and so he's saying here, you, you've got to hate. You've got to hate your mother and your father, your wife and children, your brothers and sisters. Yeah, you even have to hate your own self. This way. What in the world is Jesus talking about here? Hate. That's not the Jesus I heard about on the TV show. He was all love. All you need is love. That's it. Jesus says, hate you have to understand that how do I understand that what's he saying to me about that we have to explore that he's saying to them they have to take up a cross they have to put all of these things on that cross the wife and the mother and father the wife and children the sisters and brothers their own self they had to put it on that cross and then carry that cross around with them that's, that's what Jesus is saying. That was a, if we want to take it very literally, that's what Jesus is telling them. And when they hear that, that idea of a cross, they immediately think about Roman persecution. They can't think about anything else. They, get, they picture crosses every day in their life. Those crosses were left out there on the road so that you could see the example of what Rome thought was good and bad. That guy was on the cross. Pay attention to this. Don't do what he did. That's what it's all about. It was an obscenity. It was a, it was a picture of the worst thing, the most shameful thing that you could do, the most shameful death that you could die. That was the picture that they, they saw when Jesus spoke to him this way. But we have these parables that go along with what Jesus talks about here. And we have to consider those parables as well. Jesus talked to him about, about uh, what, which ones of you, if you, you plan to build a silo out here, a uh, place to put all your grain, grain in storage, what, uh, what, what do you do when you get ready to do that? Well, you, you figure up uh, how much, how much uh, rock you're going to need for a foundation. You figure up what kind of bricks you're going to have to put up to to make sure that the, the, the building stands strong. You can figure out what, what it's going to cost to get the roof on the top of the thing. And it's, you know, it's pretty tall up in the air, you know, a tower. Uh, you got to figure into that. You got to figure if you're going to need help, if you're going to have to pay somebody to help with this. You got to put all of this together. You got to decide, is that, is that the way it works? Now, everybody knows that's the way it works. Because if you don't, you might get the rock down for the foundation and then start with the brick and you get up so far and you run out. You didn't have the resources. You didn't consider what the resources needed were going to be. And so you ran out. 
and people are walk, will walk by. Everybody understands this. They get this picture. People will walk by and say, well, look at that guy. He didn't, he didn't plan. He didn't figure out what he needed to do. They walk by. They mock. They sneer at what, the, what was started there. And people understand that picture. They begin to put this picture together with the words that Jesus has spoken there. And then he talks about a king, a king that decides he wants to go to war. But if you're a king like that, and you know that you got 10,000 men that you can depend on to go to war, you got that, you've got those kinds of resources right there in front of, uh, right there with you. And you know, if you know that the king that you're, you're wanting to go to war against has 20,000 people, you got to sit down and do a little bit of calculation. Are my 10,000 people twice as, twice as good as his 20,000 people? I've got to consider this. What if we, they annihilate us? What if they put us, put us completely out of business here? What's going to happen to my kingdom? Everybody gets that picture. They understand that picture. No king would do that. The king, if a king was in that position, the king would send to uh, the the other king, he would send an ambassador over there. Make sure that everything that could possibly be done to maintain the peace between these two kingdoms was taken care of. They got that picture. They understood that picture. They understood that what Jesus is saying, you got to understand what it costs to be my disciple. you got to understand that you have to put away some of the things that you think are the best things in this world. And they are great things. Wife and, or mother and father, wife and children, brothers and sisters, your own self, the things I want. Those are, those are, those are things that, that, you know, they're right there on our minds. They're right there what we want to put in place as, as our priorities in this life. And Jesus has, is saying, Count the cost of being a disciple. Count the cost of putting away those priorities. Count that cost up. Consider it. Because what will you look like if you start out and then you turn around and go back? Think of the cost of that. You're forsaking all to follow Jesus is something that has to be considered. Many of us in this room have considered what the cost is in following Jesus. We, th we thought we were going to, we're le leaving things behind. And some of us found we got so much more in the process of this. Jesus talks to them about salt. In the last part of this passage, that last part of the last parable that he's offering about salt salt what's what is salt used for it's preservative it's it, it makes things taste better all of those that have had our doctors tell us that we can't have salt anymore understand what is that that's talking about there we like salt we use a lot of salt to make things taste better but consider what it would be if us if salt became tasteless if there was no taste to salt at all what could what would it, what would it be used for well it, you couldn't use it for soil you know plants can't grow in salt kills plants that's not good well and, and so you know also that you can't use it for fertilizer it's not going to work it's going to kill the plants it's not going to feed them Food's not going to taste good, as good, anymore if salt has lost its taste. What a picture that is to us to think about it in that way. And Jesus is saying here, okay, that's what it's like. If, we, if you don't forsake all of these other things, then you, you ha will not be salty followers of Jesus. Every follower of Jesus is a salty follower of Jesus. 
tastes good, makes the world better, makes the world a better place, makes the kingdom come among us to everyone that we meet. For those that have ears to hear, let them listen to what God, what Jesus is speaking to us about what it means to follow God, to be directed by God in every sense of the word, to go with God. Put away all of these other things. Just put them down. Doesn't mean you're going to lose them. Just put them down. Put Jesus up here. Put God up here. Put, put your focus on God. This week, we considered a life that was lived with us, an example that was with us for many years. It's instructive to us about that life. Bede lived a life that paid attention to God. You heard those stories about moving around all of those years. Seven, seven places in 10 years or whatever it was. It, was. it was amazing. But Bede was listening to God. Bede was being guided by God. He was a man that lived like that. He put God first. And God directed his life. Bede would testify to this. In every sense of this. He be, did testify to us about that. He was following God's direction. He was paying attention. He, he was really listening to God. That life is an example to us. Of what, what it means to be that kind of follower. Always listening for God's voice always paying attention to the world around us for what God is instructing us. Paying attention to a life like that is listening to God. Paying attention to the lives that each of us li live together as a church body, a, bo a part of the body of Christ, what each of us does is instructive to us about what God is speaking to us. And each of us is important to hear God's voice in that way. We don't, we're probably not going to go out of here today and say, I heard God's voice today. People make fun of you if you say, God spoke to me. But if God is not speaking to you in the lives of each one here as, as a part of this church body, we have, not, we have not done what God wants us to do. We are not the church that God wants us to be. How do we recognize God's voice? We have the word of God for reference. If God tells us a hard word, a hard place to go, a hard person to go talk to, we can look for Similar examples in the word of God. You can find Jesus moving in all those places. You can find the people of God, Israel, moving in all of those places. You can find the ways that God is speaking. The way that God has spoken is the word of God. And when we have a tough time understanding what God is trying to tell us, that's a place we can go to make reference, to compare to see what God has for us, to understand, to really listen to what God wants us to do. It is our resource. And this is the life of prayer. This is a life of prayer. You think about that passage in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Paul ends it when he says, being always continuing in prayer. Prayer, not just talking to God and not even primarily talking to God. It is always listening to what God has to say to us.
let's continue to grow in our understanding of what listening to God, listening for God's voice in our church life, in our individual lives, is all about. These are important lessons for us to learn. There's sometimes hard lessons because God sometimes takes us places where we really don't want to go. We wouldn't go there if it wasn't for God's voice speaking to us, listening, really listening to God. It doesn't take years. It takes a whole lot more. It takes complete, total devotion to God to God in Jesus Christ's example for us. As we end this service today, we're going to sing a song, Be Still and Know That I Am God. We sang that song. We're going to sing, we're going to sing another song. Uh, and these, these, songs, these songs have something to tell us about what it means to be living a life like that that's always listening to what God has to say. Let's stand together and sing one more song. Hymn number 599. Let's stand and sing. Jesus is Lord of all. is Lord of all. I've quit my struggles, contentment at last. Jesus is Lord of all. King of kings, Lord of lords, Jesus is Lord of all. All my possessions and all Jesus is Lord of all. All of my conflicts, all my thoughts, Jesus is Lord of all. His love wins the battle I could not have fought. Jesus is Lord of all. King of kings, Lord of lords, Jesus is Lord of all. All my possessions and all my life, Jesus is Lord of all. All of my longings, all my dreams, Jesus is Lord of all. All of my failures, His power redeems. Jesus is Lord of all. King of kings, Lord of lords, Jesus is Lord of all. All my possessions and all my life, Jesus is Lord of all. As we leave this morning, let's go in the peace of God, listening to where God is taking us, listening to what God's direction is for us. Let us go and serve the Lord. May the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the great I Am, keep you in love, challenge you to respond to the faithfulness of God, and sustain you with God's grace this day and all days. What more could he give? Oh, how he loves you. Oh, how he loves me. 
Oh, how he loves you and me. Jesus to Calvary did go. His love for sinners to show. What he did there brought hope from despair. Oh, how he loves you. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves you and me. Amen. You're dismissed.